Hey guys, this video is going to be over lesson 2.6. Uh, the assignment we're going to be working on is page 80, numbers 5, 7, 11 through 15, and 19. Just a reminder, your I can statement for this lesson was I can find ratios and perimeters of areas, that should be of, sorry, of areas of similar figures. So just keep that in mind as we work on these problems. So I'm going to go ahead and start with number 5. Okay, number five, it's going to give us two triangles, okay, and I'm going to go ahead and draw them out here. My drawing's perfect. And all we're looking for is a ratio, remember. So what we're going to do for our perimeter, remember it says the two figures are similar. Find the ratios of the perimeters and, the, and of the area. So we're going to start with perimeter. So using our notes, okay, we know that perimeter, remember, if we're just finding the ratio, we're just picking um, two corresponding sides, and that's going to be a ratio. So no real big work here we have to do, but we know for our perimeter, our ratio is going to be 5 eighths. That's all we have to do. We have to just take two corresponding sides, put them over each other. Now area, remember, is going to be our ratio, but we're going to square it. Okay, so I'm going to take my area, area equals 5 eighths, and I'm going to put it in parentheses, and I'm going to put a little squared up here. Remember, squaring does not mean times 2. Squaring means multiplying it by itself. Okay, so we're going to take 5 times 5, which would equal 25, and 8 times 8, which would be 64. So our final area is going to be 25 over 64. So we have A equals 25 over 64. And our perimeter is the ratio 5 eighths. So pause, rewind if you need to. Make sure all the work I'm writing on this gets on your paper as well. Remember, it's important to show work. Number seven should be your next one. And this is going to be set up the exact same way. I want you to try this one on your own. See if you can figure it out. It's going to be a different shape, but it's the same type of problem. So use this as your example. Try number seven, pause the video, and I'm going to move on to number 11. All right, number 11 is going to switch it up on us a little bit. It's going to actually give us the ratio. Let me draw out my shapes here real quick. So I have x, and then I have 16 here. So our book tells us the ratio of the perimeter is 8 to 5. So it writes it out like this. Remember, you can write out ratios like this. You can have it 8 over 5, whatever you feel comfortable with. So what we're actually going to do in order, and it's telling us that we need to figure out what x is. So this is when our cross multiplication is going to come in handy. We're going to take our ratio, and we're going to have it across from our corresponding sides. So when we get to this step, I'm going to actually erase this so we have room to work. Let's move this up here. So you can see all my steps here. So I got this 8 from 8 over 5 because it was the ratio the book gave us. And x over 16 is from our corresponding sides on our shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to cross multiply here. So if I take 5 times x, I'm going to get 5x. I'm going to set that equal to 8 times 16, which is going to give me 128. Now, this should look like a little bit earlier in the year. This is just going to be a one-step equation. I know that 5x means multiplication, so in order to get x by itself, I need to do the opposite, which would be to divide by 5. But whatever I do here, I have to do over here. So I'm going to get x equaling 25.6.
So this number means that in that triangle at the beginning or in your book, that we know that x is equal to this. If you didn't quite get that, pause, rewind, raise your hand. I'd love to help you out on that. Um, otherwise, hopefully that made a little bit of sense. Remember, you're just taking the ratio the book gave you and those corresponding sides to figure out what x is. On to number 12. So number 12 is actually going to be a word problem. And what that says is foosball. Plane, the plane surfaces of two foosball tables are similar. The ratio of the corresponding side lengths is 10 to 7. What is the ratio of the areas? Okay, so the book's going to give us that ratio, which is 10 to 7. Now, according to my notes, in order to find area, I know I need to square ratios. Hmm. So if I'm trying to find the ratio of the areas, we're just going to put 10 over 7 here we're going to square it. Now remember, squaring doesn't mean times 2. It means by the same number. So 10 times 10 would be 100. And 7 times 7 would be 49. So the ratio of the areas of the two foosball tables would be 100 to 49. We can also write it like this. It means the same thing. So see how you can get information from a word problem and be able to kind of take that information and get your final answer. Okay, we're going to keep going and go to number 13. 13 is going to be another word problem here. And it's going to talk about cheerleading. So it says, a rectangular school banner has a length of 44 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that out. So I have a rectangular school banner. We can make it the Indianola banner. Okay. And we had a length of 44 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and label that. And it's going to tell us that this perimeter... Perimeter equals 156 inches, and its area is equal to 1,496 square inches. Okay, some good information. We're still not quite done. It says the cheerleaders make signs similar to the banner. So we know we're going to have another sign over here that's going to be similar, maybe not where it's not congruent, but it'd definitely be similar. <laughs> and the length of a, si of a sign is 11 inches. What is the perimeter and its area? So we're going to try to find the perimeter of this new sign and the area of this new sign. So let's start with what we know, okay? What I know about a rectangle is that it has two of the same sides and two of the same sides. So if we know 44 up here, we know that down here is going to be 44. Now, how are we going to figure these out? It gave us some really important information. It told us that we have already, we already know the perimeter and we know the area, okay? So what we can do is we can take 156 and we can subtract 88 because 44 and 48, or 44 and 44 equals 88. So I'm going to grab my calculator, sorry. All my chair over here. And I'm going to type that information in. So I'm going to put 156 minus 88, and I'm going to get 68. So what does that tell me? That tells me that I still need two sides here. So I know I can take the 68 and I can divide it by 2. And it's going to give me 34. So that means 
each side here is going to be 34 inches. So I just kind of looked at that backwards. I knew I had my final product and I had some of the parts and I was just trying to solve for the missing. So now I have my whole shape here, which is going to help us figure out this one. So what I can do now, because we don't need this anymore, what I can do now is I now know this one's ratio. So I can do 44, my black marker is going out here, hold on. I can do 44 over 34, because that would be my ratio for this one. And I'm trying to figure out x right here. I'm trying to figure out this one's um, width. So I'm going to make that equal to 11 over x. Now this should look familiar. It looks like we're going to do some cross multiplication. So I'm going to get 44x when I multiply x times 44. And 34 times 11 is going to give me 372. Now I'm still not quite done. I know that 44x means that I'm multiplying. So I have to do the opposite. So I'm going to divide by 44. That cancels out. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to divide by 44. And x is going to equal 8.5. Okay. So now I know this side is 8.5. Now we're still not quite done. Remember the original problem, I just ran out of room on my board, is we need to figure out the perimeter and the area for this, okay? So now I can kind of do what I did over here, is I knew if 11 was up, or if I knew that 44 was up here, I knew 44 was down here. So we can do the same thing because these are similar things. So I'm gonna go ahead and, if I can get a marker that works here. So I know 11's gonna be here. Same thing with this. If I know 8.5 is here, I know 8.5 is going to be here. Okay. Now, going back to the problems we did before, we know that area is the ratio squared. Okay. So we're going to go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Area would just be length times width. 